This is Creatures of Scenaria. And this is Creatures of Scenaria Recode. An upcoming huge update that basically makes it a whole new game. If you didn't know what Creatures of Scenaria is, it's a fantasy creature survival game with over 250 unique creatures to play. However, surviving in the current game is really easy. There are infinite food sources, tons of different places to drink water, and also meat falls from the sky. Regardless, everything changes in Creatures of Scenario Recode, including survival, which now proves to be a legitimate challenge. In addition to this, the Recode update completely revamps the map, implements entirely new flying physics, a beautiful new overhauled UI, and even natural disasters. And there is so much more in this update. So let's explore what Roblox's best upcoming survival game has to offer. Let's begin with changes to the map. Some biome themes remain the same, such as the Swamp, Redwoods, and Tundra. There are tons of new places to visit and explore in the new map, like Volcano Island or the Central Rock Faces. For the ocean, it has been completely overhauled too, with a bunch of different unique biomes. My personal favorites are the Coral Reef and the Seaweed Depths. To make travel easier, there are also these things called slipstreams. They give you a speed boost and make it a little easier to travel. To hasten travel even more, aquatics now have the ability to dash underwater, at the cost of some stamina, of course. They can also jump out of the water too, and it is so much fun. On the flip side, some terrestrials can jump on land too. And lastly, there are now some portals underwater, which allow aquatics to reach parts of the map which aren't connected. With all of these huge changes to the ocean, playing as an aquatic is so much more player friendly. But let's move on. Because after all, if you don't have a good understanding of how to survive, you are not going to last for very long. In Recode, survival is no longer such a meager task. Resources are a legitimate concern. As for carnivores, food is no longer infinite. And while the water doesn't run out, the quality of it drops over time as people drink it. Drinking dirty water results in getting hit with a big debuff. These two factors alone will push players to actively migrate and pursue other territories that haven't yet been stripped of resources. <laughs> to go along with this, there is a new mission system, with each different biome having their own objectives to complete. These objectives are very simple, ranging from just eating food in an area to just traveling around. There's also some exclusive mission creatures to unlock too. Finishing these missions will grant you shooms, which is the in-game currency used for purchasing new creatures and a bunch more. Footsteps are now a thing too, so if you're intent on hunting other players as your main source of food, tracking is now an actual strategy. With all of these systems combined, interactive, unique gameplay is encouraged, and I am very excited to see how all of this will work in a server full of people. Another factor that influences gameplay and survival are the weather systems. Seasons are ever-changing, and weather events randomly occur. There are a bunch of seasons, with all of them altering the appearance of the map. Weather events, however, usually have a more direct impact on your gameplay. There's fog, which can obscure vision and disables the ability to smell, rain, which also obscures vision, flowering, which I'm not currently sure what it does at the moment. It looks pretty, I guess. There's snow, which makes it snow, obviously, and debuffs you when you're outside. Lastly, there's thunderstorm. It obscures vision quite heavily, but the main threat is something I'll talk about soon. All of these weather events may have more profound impacts on how you play in the future. However, there are two big events that will influence how you play drastically. A thunderstorm is honestly pretty harmless, except that it has the chance to cause a flood. The flood raises the water level globally around the map. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm stuck here now. Honestly, aquatics stay winning with this update. When a flood happens, they can go anywhere they want. The entire map is open to them. It's the whole, the whole map is just theirs. It's going to be so much fun. The second major event is the volcanic eruption, which I hope doesn't need much explaining. Oh god, oh! No, no, no! Now that you've become more acquainted with how to survive in Recode, I'm going to teach you about the drastic changes to movement. The changes to movement are vast, and also kind of hard to explain. To truly understand how it feels, you'd have to play Recode. But I think if I get a little... There we go. Now you can see what keys I'm pressing at what time. So I hope it helps with understanding the new movement. Let's cover the basics. To put it simply, 
everything feels much smoother and slower in Recode. But most notably, flying is nowhere near as overpowered. Taking off now takes stamina and no longer gives you a big boost in the air. Falling is much faster, and bumping into terrain is now much better at knocking you out of flight. Already, all of these factors make flying so much more realistic. What ties everything together is honestly how hard it is to fly now. Let's get into specifics, and I'm probably gonna butcher these terms, but here we go. Pressing A or D while flying adjusts your yaw. Q and E adjust roll. And looking up or down with your mouse will adjust your pitch. I think that's the correct terms. I'm so sorry if any pilots are watching. Hitting F will swap you between flying and gliding. Holding down shift while airborne will give you some extra speed, at the cost of draining your stamina faster. While in flying mode, you will always drain stamina over time. While gliding, you will actually gain stamina slowly, but sprinting will still drain your stamina. I believe that's mostly everything control-wise, but here are a few general tips. Stamina is now an essential resource to flying, and you should watch this bright yellow bar like a hawk. Try to use yaw and roll simultaneously for the best turn rate. It helps a, a bit, although mostly roll isn't that useful as it's mostly to stabilize yourself. Beware of gliding. Gliding allows you to regain stamina while airborne, yes, but your control is so much worse. Turning is very hard while gliding, so if you're trying to change direction or do some tight maneuvers, you do not want to be gliding. Just hit F and swap. I think that's everything with movement. I know it's all flying, there's a bunch more small tweaks, but I'll leave you to experience them on your own. Which will likely be sooner than you think. On the Creatures of Scenaria Discord, someone asked how long will it be for the public to get their hands on Recode. Erythia, a manager, replied with, about two to four weeks, I think. And at the time of posting this video, that was three weeks ago. Obviously, this can change, but I believe you can play Recode sooner than you thought. That's all the information I wanted to cover. A beautiful new map, meaningful survival mechanics, higher quality movement, jumping, portals, tracking, the list goes on. Every single one of these additions make Creatures of Scenario Recode into a refreshing, unique, beautiful survival experience that's like no other. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I spent way more time on it than I thought I would, but I wanted to ensure all the information in the video was correct and also displayed in a meaningful, legible way. If you're excited for Recode, leave a like on the video. If you want to join in on some huge events and possibly be in a video in the future, join my Discord. I'll be hosting some cool stuff when Recode comes out. It's free to join and I'd love to have you. The link will be down in the description. Anyway, you guys have an awesome day and I'll see you later. Peace.